Hello everyone again. Glad to be here. Uh, what I bring as my uh, main example is something that is quite opposite to what Milos has just talked about. It's about uh, it's a story of successful young artists in the 90s in Poland. Mm, so uh, let me begin uh, with a quote from a classic book on uh, capitalism, which is by uh, Mark Fisher, uh, Capitalist Realism, Is There No Alternative, 2009. So let me remind a bit of it. There is a chapter in this book uh, where Fisher poses the question, what if you uh, held a protest and everyone come? Which is a dream of a uh, every activist, I suppose. And he says, and he writes um, a few lines which are quite uh, mm, exemplary to this situation. To reclaim a real political agency means, first of all, uh, accepting our insertion at the level of desire in the mid-grinder of capital. And then he says, the most Gothic description of capital is also most accurate. Capital is an abstract parasite, a vampire, and zombie maker, but the living flesh it converts into dead labor is ours. And the zombies it makes are us. <laughs> and then he go on, continue. Uh, capitalist realism, to put a definition forward, uh, as I understand, as he understands, it cannot be confined, uh, confined to art or to the quasi-propagandistic way in which advertising functions. Uh, it is more like a persuasive atmosphere, conditioning not only the production of culture, but also the regulation of work and education and acting as a kind of invisible barrier. Excuse me. Uh, constraining thought and action. Needless to say, uh, he continues, what counts as realist that seems impossible at any point of the social field, it's defined by a series of political determinations. So what he, uh, what he mm, underlines is that it is a always historical configuration made by politics, what is possible and what is not, even though we are all the time in the same story, in the same system. Over 30 years, capitalist realism has successfully installed a business ontology uh, in which it is simply obvious that everything in society, including healthcare and education, should be run as a business. So it was 2009, and as we know, the auto committed suicide some years later, suffering of chronic depression and also this part of like uh, uh, mental disorders proliferating in the neoliberal economy and how these two uh, registers interact with our uh, living is crucial for this uh, for this story. But let's go uh, to our examples. So the question is, uh, the question which has been posed by you uh, while organizing this meeting is, uh, have we learned anything during past uh, 30 years? Has anything changed? Uh, so uh, what I do mean by this claim I put in my uh, proposal, uh, pigs are pretty much the same, uh, but the drugs were different, uh, is the claim on difference between now, 90s and now. Um, it is a question not only about how uh, we understood uh, drugs or ad addictive substances as literally as antidepressants and stimulants we we are so much addicted to, and we uh, we uh, have prescriptions on a daily daily basis from from our therapists and our uh, f um, and uh, the healthcare organizations as well. It is not only about the uh, increase of the, um, the pressure 
uh, Fisher told about, I've mentioned. It is also about a broader kind of uh, resources that we have and then, and we are still addicted to, that we desire, and the resources that we trade also in the gray zones. So this is something that the drug is something that we trade in a gray zone, which is half legal or illegal, or it is restricted, or it is about to be restricted. Because the point I would like to make is that the 90s was the, it was a moment where in culture, things were changing in the way that those things that were common are about to be restricted. We know the story. Uh, so the, uh, the example, the main story I bring, uh, it's how you find yourself in a gray zone uh, where things are trafficked in the 90s. This is quite a generic story. Uh, we all probably know by ourselves when you are a young undergrad in, for example, art history in the 90s and you look for your first job or now it would be the intern, you go to a gallery, which is like, uh, like Jakub just said, <laughs> which is one of the top galleries in your area, in your region. And your boss probably will tell you during the first day, go go to the dungeons and go to look at the archives or go to the warehouse, do something with this mess. And you obviously, you go there and say it is a warehouse, it is much too polite because usually it's an attic, uh, there is no infrastructure, and it is not even heroic, like we don't have any infrastructure, it's somewhere between. Yeah, It's a banal space that you have lots of things just piled. So you get through these piles and it is super fun because you understand, <laughs> understand almost nothing. You're a young undergrad and you look at these paintings and start, you start to connect what you've learned during the le lectures that you have some names and some works that are together here and there and uh, you go on and suddenly uh, you uh, come across um, a magazine a, something that has been like dropped on the shelves uh, there. A magazine uh, that in, you realize after a while, one, once you just, just look at it, being a prescriber of uh, punk anarchist magazines and art zines at the time, that, that it is a zine, yeah? It's like much pariatka, obviously, but it looks totally different, like totally different. And um, you look at it, and you, after after some years, you will be able to pronounce it that it is uh, the art of sellout in its purest version. And I was bought at the first sight. I don't have the originals, but I have some. They are unfortunately in Polish, but they have some copies which you have some excerpts from these magazines. Hey, here you are, you can live through. I recommend to look at the, at the titles and headlines where, where the so source for, for each idea, for each uh, stripe is, is, is marked. Uh, so uh, you come across to uh, what I came across, uh, what is connected with this, my version of this generic experience of getting uh, into this zone, uh, was the famous magazine on Tuesday, edited by uh, young artists uh, who belonged to a newly established group, Wadnie, uh, at the time. And um, so it was um, an art of the sellout, as I say, and the dream was about to come true because actually these guys like Marcin Maciejowski, Rafał Bujnowski, Wilhelm Sassner, they became super famous after like two years. Like selling all over the world. If, if you get to like Polish contemporary action beats, etc. Can I have the first slide, please? Oh, 2007, these are these magazines, these copies. Uh, and you have Hammer Price, uh, 1,030 euro, which is maybe not super, super high, but it is still something. And uh, it uh, outbid is like uh, 100 something per percent. Probably right now, even when they have edited a kind of anthology of these, uh, of these images and of these uh, magazines, they, uh, it's like 
super hard to get it anywhere and you have to pay a lot for this outprint, etc., etc. Uh, so uh, it went very well with obviously some dark undertones as usual. Like when you get to the, when I came back before this session, before I came here to the archives in Contemporary Art Museum in Krakow right now, I got this box for Sasnel and for Maciejowski. And there I find also the, some echoes of, um, let's say, controversy between the gallery owner at the time and the artist and selling like, you, you know, this is also this typical sad, sad stories where you have some, um, uh, some discussion about royalties and some discussion about the public, um, public image of the gallery, not nice. But it fits to this program very, very well. So let's go back to uh, Fisher and um, this um, search for alternative. Uh, Fisher writes also, like, in case of gangster rap Elroy, and we can say also in case of Maciejowski and Wadi and in many, many other cases, capitalist realism takes form of a kind of super identification, which we know, uh, with capital at its most uh, pitlessly predatory version, uh, but it does not have to be the case. This is what Fisher writes. Like, it does not have to be the case. It can be otherwise. That if we now go back to this plan we have here and speak about 90s and an art scene, then my proposition would be uh, more, uh, like I said, pessimistic. So my claim would be that the 90s with temporary Alter, um, autonomous zones, not only in ISIS, but in, uh, in, even now. Shadow libraries. By the way, I've downloaded Mark Fisher copy from uh, Monoscope. Thank you, Monoscope, again. Commodification. Uh, mm, illegal substances. Uh, there are all, we can know it, it's, this, this is a typical, again, popular theory. There are all neoliberal inventions. I mean, they do not exist without the neoliberal system as a hegemonic system. They are on the peripheries, but there is a st strict connection between these two models. Even the, if, if you oppose, you oppose against this. Um, and therefore, um, they are either opposite uh, um, or uh, over-identified with the neoliberal economy. So they are either zombies or vampires. Not nice. They are either zombies or vampires. But what has changed within these 20 plus years? Is there anything else? And one of the propositions that I take from uh, people who are into economy and into social sciences, and it's even a Nobel Prize in 2009 for Elinor Ostrom, it's politics of commons. The politics of commons which did not actually exist or is has been just start, it has been about to be pronounced at, at the time, not on the level on, of independent culture, but on the level of very serious political discourse. Uh, Politic of Commons about, uh, um, which states that if we look for a sense of community, and here I refer to contemporary researcher who, uh, who is into this politics of commons and social protest, who comes from Groningen University, Thies Giesner. I don't know if I pronounce his name well. Maybe you know uh, his, his writing, yeah? Okay, so he says that if we are looking for sense of community right now, it's not maybe about uh, we should look for norms and values. We should not look for community in terms of emotion, like personal identity. Uh, or national identity, which is even worse, and you, you've mentioned about it. But this might be about shared resources, quite reasonable, right? Okay, it's only about resources that anyone can use uh, without uh, them being anyone's property, just the resources. Let's not go into, uh, into existential and social relations, just stay at the lowest. And within these resources for the, this discourse on mm, politics of commons, it climbs up onto the top of political and economy agenda with, uh, 
with the experience of World Wide Web in the 90s, obviously, like internet was the one of the one of the uh, spheres that have been produced by neoliberal economy, produced by the system, and at the time it, it became something that everyone would like to administrate. So we have this tension between like owning the new resources, the capitalist uh, system built, and reclaiming this resource. And now, nowadays this uh, discourse on commons speaks about uh, electromagnetic field, uh, orbital debris, uh, all these nasty things we don't want to deal about uh, deal with very much. They are quite problematic. But in the moment, it may turn up that we we just we just want it. So to sum up, to wrap up, yeah. Uh, so so what uh, if uh, art would be capable of living with commons? And I leave it as an open question: Is art like attuned? to really, really function in terms of commons, common resources, regarding these stories we've, I've, uh, I put on the, on the wall to, today. Uh, may I have the last slide, uh, please? And to, for an end, a conspiracy theory. Uh, Tina, Polish magazine for women published by Bauer, a uh, German uh, publishing house, since uh, it started in 1992 or something. I don't know if you had these versions of Tina. Yeah, yeah, Tina. And the conspiracy theory goes like this. Is it by coincidence that Marcin Maciejowski took some many, lots of pictures from Tina magazine, and at the time, Tina stands for famous acronym coined by Margaret Thatcher. There is no alternative. Thank you very much. <laughs>